Uh, Linda Burney, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dan. Uh, what's your take on the results? Two of, of seven targets on track to be met this year? Incredibly disappointing. Uh, they are the same results as last year. The two targets that are on track, that's uh, achieving Year 12 and all four year olds getting a preschool education were the same targets that were on track last year. Uh, the, the headline target really, which is life expectancy, uh, is uh, about eight years difference on average between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. And of course, when you get to more remote and rural areas, uh, that blows out to, as Anthony Albanese described it, not, uh, not a gap, but a chasm. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the emergence of, uh, of the issue of cancer, uh, which is one of, becoming one of the main, main uh, reasons for Aboriginal peoples life expectancy being cut so short. There are some of the other targets where improvements are being made, but either the gap isn't closing because the rest of the community are seeing the same improvements or the gap just isn't closing quickly mm. enough. Do we need to um, reflect on, on those as, as, as victories and, and not failures in this, in this closing the gap context? I think that your, the point you've made um, is an important one. Take, for example, infant mortality. Now, it looks like uh, things have slightly improved there, but they actually haven't because infant mortality has improved generally across the community. Um, and I, I think as a nation, uh, we are diminished while these discrepancies um, exist and it is not just the responsibility of the coalition of peak organisations, uh, but government has to take absolutely uh, fundamental responsibility for, uh, and that's at a state and federal level, for the, uh, the, 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 the chasm that exists uh, to be there. The, the life expectancy target, as you mentioned there, is, is not on track. And back when this started, it really was a campaign about life expectancy. Do you think that is being lost and is at risk of being diminished even further when these new targets come out, up to 15 of them we're hearing later this year? Well, we don't know what the new targets are. I understand, uh, as Labor has been campaigning for a long time, that it will address the issue of incarceration rates, which is important. Uh, the life expectancy target was over a, um, a generation, so it's only about halfway through. And as Anthony Albanese said in his speech, there is time to, and the opportunity, if we are brave enough to move too close that target. I mean, when you talk to people from other countries, and explain the discrepancy in life expectancy. It is just not able to be understood. And I've been to many communities, Dan, where I've seen uh, dreadful living conditions, uh, communities without water, communities without clean water, so dialysis is not possible. Um, young, young children uh, with rheumatic heart disease. This is the reality for Aboriginal people living in many parts of Australia. This um, refresh uh, of the Closing the Gap agenda, which looks like it'll be finalised later this year, how has that process been going in, in your view? Well, I'm, I'm not quite sure how it's going. I've had some good briefings from uh, uh, Pat Turner in the Coalition of Peace, but in terms of the actual targets, that's a discussion I understand that's taking place uh, through the COAG process. Um, I, I hope that the targets that are delivered really do drive change. We just cannot continue to have year in and year out heartfelt words in the parliament from the Prime Minister without much changing. That's, that's not acceptable, not only to First Nations people, but not acceptable to the Labor Party and certainly not acceptable to the broader community. Yeah, would you have liked to have been in, included in the refresh process more? Would Federal Labor like to have been brought into that process? I think one of the really uh, crucial things that was 
made once again by Anthony today and, and the Prime Minister is the importance of bipartisanship. Uh, the social justice condition of Aboriginal people is dire. Um, we have seen improvements in some areas, but it's still dire. And the only way it's going to be fully addressed is through a partnership with First Peoples. Um, that's in place, and that's very good. Uh, but it has to be a partnership, in my view, across the parliament. So, so would you have liked to have been in, invited into that process um, uh, from the beginning as opposed to getting your briefings from Indigenous organisations and not, not the government itself? I think it would be useful um, that the targets are collectively worked out, but they're not. And the people that are working those targets out know what they're talking about. So I have some faith in, in that process. Linda, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.